Hi, my name is Deborah Wexler, and I am the clinical director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Diabetes Center and an associate professor at Harvard Medical School. I'm also one of the GRADE investigators, and it was extremely exciting after many years of conducting the GRADE trial that we presented the preliminary results of the GRADE study at the American Diabetes Association scientific sessions in June of 2021. I just want to say a little bit about GRADE. GRADE is a comparative effect in this study, which is comparing which second glucose lowering medication added to metformin is most effective over time for people with diabetes. The vast majority of medication trials are placebo controlled. Um, very rarely are there active comparators. And in a placebo controlled trial, there's often a very clean message coming out of the study. That's partially because an active medication is being compared against the placebo. And it's partially because often when it's a registration trial, the trial is really designed to highlight the benefit of the new medication. GRADE was completely different. Comparative effectiveness trials compare multiple act one or two or more active medications against each other. And GRADE actually compared four medications head to head. The rationale for this, of course, was that people with type two diabetes have a number of medications to choose from. At the time the GRADE was designed and up until the publication of GRADE, it really wasn't clear which second glucose lowering medication was best for type two diabetes. And people take these medications for a very long time. So GRADE was designed to answer the question in an apples to apples comparison, when you line up a DPP-4 inhibitor, we used citagliptin, a sulfonylurea, we used glimepiride, a GLP-1 receptor, we used liraglutide, or basal insulin, glargine, when you compare those head to head in people who are at the same stage of diabetes, which one performs best over time? And we have a result and I'm gonna share that result with you in a minute, but I just wanna point out that it's the, the results are a little bit like a little bit of this is better, a little bit of that is better. It's not just one take home message. And in fact, from grade, we're not going to have one take home message. We're gonna have a number of papers that come out over years that really help all of us understand how these medications play out um, in diverse people with type two diabetes. So GRADE um, included a highly diverse population, 20% Black and 18% Latino patients that was deliberately designed to recruit from the populations disproportionately impacted by diabetes. Um, and we, we did perform that head-to-head -head comparison among people with type 2 diabetes. When they enrolled in the trial, they had to have a hemoglobin A1C between 6.8 and 8.5. And they had to have diabetes for less than 10 years and they had to be tolerating metformin at least 1,000 milligrams daily, but most people were very close to 2,000 milligrams daily of metformin. Um, and we enrolled 5,000 people. On average, people were about 57 years old and had diabetes for about four years. And we assigned 1,250 to each of those medications and followed people on average for five years, but at the most up to eight years. So what we found in GRADE was that the two injectable medications, liraglutide and insulin, were most effective in keeping A1C levels less than seven. Glomepiride was slightly less effective than insulin and liraglutide. And citagliptin was the least effective and had the fastest progression to a development of an A1C greater than seven. We also then followed people on the assigned medication until the A1C of let, was let, uh, hit 7.5, and glargine was most effective in keeping the A1C less than 7.5, which was a secondary outcome. Uh, Gloraglutide was a close second there. Now, one of the other really interesting things about this study was that the adverse effects um, really differed. So we found that um, weight changes really differed. So on average, participants treated with liraglutide and citagliptin had more weight loss than those treated with glomepiride. And actually the glomepiride group had the most weight kind of gain over time, whereas patients assigned to basal insulin glargine had stable weight over time. That was a little bit of a surprise. I think we might've expected that patients treated with basal insulin would have um, had more weight gain than people with sulfonylureas, but that was not what we found. In terms of side effects, Liraglutide, as might be expected for a GLP-1 receptor agonist, did have more GI side effects, such as nausea, abdominal pain, and diarrhea than the other medications. Um, and interestingly, when it came to hypoglycemia, glomepiride actually had the highest risk for hypoglycemia than the other medications, followed, of course, by insulin. But again, it was a bit of a surprise that the glomepiride did a little worse than the insulin with respect to hypoglycemia. 
Now, one of the most interesting findings coming out of GRADE was the cardiovascular outcomes. So GRADE enrolled a very low risk population as listeners and watchers probably know, most cardiovascular outcome trials with all the diabetes meds have enrolled people who have a history of cardiovascular disease or people at very high risk of cardiovascular disease. That was not the case in GRADE. In GRADE, we enrolled people, like you said, with only four years um, duration of diabetes. The rate of established cardiovascular disease at baseline was around 6%. So this was a relatively healthy early diabetes population. And we actually did not expect to see any differences in cardiovascular outcomes um, because we didn't expect to have enough numbers of cardiovascular outcomes to be able to detect a benefit. But what we reported at American Diabetes Association is when we looked at the composite outcome of all of the adjudicated cardiovascular events put together, all of the heart attacks, all of the strokes, all of the heart failure, all of the vascular complications, not just MACE, but sort of the the big, um, every cardiac event together, there did seem to be a relative benefit for liraglutide. Now that is not a final result. um, And, you know, we're going to have to see, you know, we we wanted to get the results out as quickly as possible for ADA, but we also want to confirm that result. Um, So I don't want people to say that that's 100% certain. But I think what's going to be important, um, since we hadn't yet adjudicated all the cardiovascular outcomes, is when the final papers come out this fall, keep an eye out to see what were the final cardiovascular results of GRADE. You know, what happened to MACE? What happened to heart failure? What happened to the composite of cardiovascular events? I think that's a very intriguing finding that people are going to want to know more about. 